G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday afternoon here in Australia and the markets are still chopping and changing sort of all over the place. Bitcoin, Bitcoin sorry, is really struggling to break above that $50,000 mark uh, and Ethereum really struggling to kind of get above the $15,000, $1,600 mark. It has been higher uh, and look, it has been lower than where it is for both of those as well. So again, a really sort of indecisive market at the moment. And I've got some pretty interesting stories that uh, also help to, I guess, prove that kind of point as well. That there, there really is a lot of indecisive stuff going on at the moment. All right, market cap though, still over 1.5 trillion. So that's really good. It really has been hanging around that mark. That really does seem like it's the kind of, the base at the moment it's not to say we can't go a little bit lower but lower sorry lower <laughs> can't go a little bit lower but 1.5 trillion is just a fairly comfortable base at the moment at least all right and again look it's up 3.3 percent that's not too bad btc dominance still under 60 percent uh eth dominance still under 12 percent and gas prices uh coming down again they've been lower and it'd be Nice if they're a lot lower, but it's also been a lot higher. All right, let's have a look. We can see a bit of green there, so it's not looking too bad at the moment. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours, in the top 100 at least? All right, so we've still got some good movers. So Holo doing well, uh, Terra Luna doing quite well, Swissborg, Quantum, Ontology, uh, Ren BTC. That's interesting that it's worth more than the normal BTC. I'm not sure what's going on there, but anyway. Good for anyone holding Ren BTC. Uh, Polygon Matic, so it continues to do pretty well. Again, this still is a bit choppy all over the place, though, but look, up 14.8% in seven days is not too bad. Look, no kind of crazy gains. You know, there's a couple really, anything over 15% uh, in cryptocurrencies is pretty good. So we've got a few there, and then other ones are just, you know, in the kind of single digits, really. I mean, this is double digits, but... Uh, in the lower, lower end of the double digits and then it's just a lot of single digit kind of stuff so again nothing sort of too crazy but things are moving up slightly but more traveling sort of sideways as you can see there's a lot of sideways kind of movement from where it started to where it finished again this one's done pretty well so v chain has definitely finished higher than where it started so great for all the V-Chain holders. I am one of them, so I'm pretty happy. Cardano, again, it has come down. It was always going to happen. Nothing can go up like that for that long and not come down. Like perfect example, NEM. I expect to see a correction from this. And look, it already has corrected somewhat from what its high was. And that's just the way it goes. Let's have a look though. What about, you know, what coins haven't performed so well over the last 24 hours? All right, Chili's, again, same thing, was always going to happen. Had 100% in seven days, so yep, of course it's going to pull back. Theta Network, uh, Engine, same thing again, had such a good couple of days. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if this pulls back maybe nearly 30% of that 110%. Uh, well, it was actually more. So again, if it's a dollar twenty-two, you know, let's say it pulls back to, I don't know, around $1.05 maybe, $1.10, something like that wouldn't surprise me. And again, same with Chili's. It pumps so much that of course it's going to pull back. But nothing too bad here really overall. Again, yeah, we got some losses over the 24 hours, but most of these have had gains over the last seven days. So Synthetics Network as well. But Synthetics has really been kind of traveling sort of sideways for a while. It got up to $24. It got down to $17 and now again. So it's just chopping and changing. It's found a home at $20. But we're just going to have to wait and see what happens with the market in general because, you know, it's indecisive at the moment. Look, it could just fire and go to the upside, but it could drop and go to the low side for at least a, a short amount of time. But look, stocks aren't doing that well at the moment and the correlation is high. So if they're not doing that well, then typically we're not going to do that well. All right, let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart though. So again, I think it's time that we got rid of this. This is now null and void. We don't need this anymore. We broke out of it, which was good. But now we can see that we have still formed another low and we're waiting to see what happens here. Will this drop off? You know, have we had the real weekend retracement? Was this maybe it? Did it come like a little bit early on kind of Thursday? We're still waiting to see what's happening here though. But again, we can look at the time 
uh, over here. So it's only four o'clock in the morning UTC time. So they've still got plenty of hours to go. But again, we've still got to wait for sort of Sunday to come. So it's Saturday here in Australia. This is Friday over in the States, getting ready for Saturday. So could this be a move up or does this just continue to roll over? We still have a downward sort of trend at the moment. So really, this is what we've got going on at the moment. We come down, we've come up, we've come down. So again, maybe we're going to come down here, and then we're going to come up again, and then we're going to roll over and do something like this. Now, I'm not saying that is what's going to happen. I'm just not going to be surprised if it does. Again, look, we've done it over here. It's almost like history is sort of repeating itself. Whoops, sorry, I'll get rid of that. All right, so we can see that we had this. See, we had this big boom, rolled over, came back up, rolled over, came back up and rolled over for one sort of final low there. And look, this is almost what it's doing again. We've had this big move up, rolled over, it's come back up. This will probably roll over again, no guarantees in life though. And then it'll probably come back up and then possibly roll over again for a low finishing somewhere down around sort of the 40 again i do see a close down around the forty-two thousand dollar mark so i think we're going to get down to here with a candle close i wouldn't be surprised if we see a wick that sort of comes down into the thirty-nine thousand dollar range again something sort of like this or sort of like this now again there's no guarantees in life i'm not saying that's what is going to happen and i never offer financial advice I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if that does if that is what happens. It takes a while for this kind of exuberance to play out. So what did we have here? 8th of January till the 27th of January. So that was three weeks. So it took three weeks for the market to correct and find its way up again. Okay, this started on the 21st of Feb. So we've probably still got another week or so to go if... This is history repeating itself. Now again, it's not going to be exactly the same. It never is, but it's usually somewhat similar. So again, this one was up, rolled, uh, rolled over, up, rolled over, and then came up, rolled over, came up, and then rolled over. So there was a few elements in that. This one might be just we came up, rolled over, came up, we roll over and literally stop here at 42,000 and then start to make our way back up. That's a possibility. It's not going to be exactly the same as this, but it could be quite similar. Let's have a look. When was the last time we had something similar like that happen? Well, it's been quite a while actually, so yeah. It's not even worth trying to find that because we've just had such a, a really good bull market really. So of course there's going to be things like this that come and shake people out. You know, there's going to be a bit of market manipulation in there, no doubt. But also, until this new stimulus checks come out and things like that, we've just kind of got to the point where there isn't enough new money coming in now. That doesn't mean the bear market's upon us and everything's going to go south. It's a possibility, something we need to keep in mind, but there's no guarantees that that's what's going to happen. Based on history, we probably still have another couple of legs to go up. But history won't always repeat itself and again it's never exactly the same it's just somewhat similar generally all right let's move on to some interesting news stories that i found who likes polka dot and could you imagine getting some at about 20 cents all right so cheap polka dot at 20 cents following a flash crash on binance coin margin futures oh i would have loved that i would have been I would have threw pretty much the kitchen, everything and the kitchen sink at Polkadot for 20 cents. So Polkadot dropped to 20 cents on Binance Futures coin margin perpetual contracts in a sudden flash crash. Wow, I don't think too many people got to uh, take advantage of that. But God, even if you could just get the tiniest bit for 20 cents considering it's, uh, what is it, 20 bucks now at the moment or something like that. Polkadot, let's have another look. Polka dot 30 there you go so it's ten dollars off so imagine picking it up for 20 cents you would be absolutely cheering all right cover protocol so they teamed up with your finance a little while ago so it seems like the uh, merger is now done and dusted so curve protocol slides 40 percent following breakup with your finance your finance has announced its parting ways with cover protocol 
and that resulted resulted in a serious crash in the price of cover so these are things that you have to be prepared for in the crypto industry everything's still so new you know yeah it's nice that excuse me all these projects and platforms partner up but what happens if they don't have the long the same long-term sort of view and goals and things like that mergers can fall apart now yearn finance is pretty big so they're probably still going to do all right cover protocol I guess we'll have to wait and see how, how do they come out of this do they come off better or do they come off worse because at the moment they're obviously doing pretty bad 40 percent down but that's not to say they can't recover but you know in all these new spaces everything is new we don't have a whole lot of track record to go on for half these projects uh, and platforms out there so this is a little bit disappointing for anyone in pro, uh, cover protocol but it doesn't mean it's the end it could recover from here and it could do a thousand times better we just don't know but for anyone in pro, uh, cover protocol particularly if they've kind of bought the top and now lost 40 percent that's really going to hurt but if they're in it nice and early then they're probably still up anyway all right no more bitcoin effect micro strategy stock falls by 50 percent in seven days so obviously the the lure of bitcoin has dropped off a little bit because the price just doesn't keep going up this is what happens and it shakes out the weak hands and the strong hands they'll just hold uh, and most likely do really well again there's no guarantees on that it's just based on previous history and my personal opinion is i think bitcoin has a, a ton more upside but whether we're going to see all of that upside in the next few months before a bear market comes or whether it's we see that over the next five years it's a prolonged bull market no one really knows so i think another bear market will come i think it comes somewhere around about sort of again sort of september this year through to maybe march next year we'll have to wait and see no one really knows but let's continue so the excitement around bitcoin has spilled over beyond spot price data shows with micro strategy going from above thirteen hundred dollars to six hundred and twenty nine dollars in just seven days Data from markets on March 5th, sorry, revealed that MicroStrategy, which owns 91,000 Bitcoin, has seen its stock price dive by more than half in just three weeks. So that was uh, partly to do with the fact that they've bought Bitcoin, uh, and I'm guessing some people probably thought uh, the price was too high, even though uh, people put money into it. And so now, yeah, people are getting a little bit nervous and probably starting to sell off MicroStrategy shares. Long term... I don't think they're going to be just fine, but we'll have to wait and see. But it does, that you know, it definitely does hurt people that are in micro strategy uh, in the stock and only bought it somewhat recently. 50% uh, drop, yeah, that could definitely be hurting some people. But again, I, I think uh, Michael Saylor's made the right decision and I think they're going to be just fine in the long run. All right, major Ethereum gas overhaul, EIP. 1559 is scheduled for July. Now, this isn't just about gas, though. So, so, you know, the way they say major gas overhaul, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, as far as I know, there were, it was more the burning factor and things like that. When transactions are done, it's going to make it deflationary instead of inflationary. But I know there was some gas stuff in this EIP 1559. So look, anything that can reduce gas prices on Ethereum is going to be more than welcomed. I just don't know if it's going to be a major uh, gas overhaul. I guess we'll wait and see. But July, that just can't come soon enough for most of us. Big institutional uh, players and, you know, the people who are basically rich, uh, you know, these gas fees probably not too uh, much for them at all. But, you know, everyday investors, uh, and I include myself in that, I just can't afford it. I haven't been able to do any of the staking on any of the uh, platforms that I was. I want to stake some Aave on that platform. Gas fees are just too high. It's about 100 bucks. Uh, change my synthetics tokens from their layer one to their layer two, well over $100. Uh, I haven't even bothered with Kyber Network. And again, it's not that I'm against any of these platforms. It's just simply, yeah, Ethereum has grown faster than it could handle at the moment. So hopefully this really is as they say a major gas fee overhaul that would be amazing all right nfts just keep going so twitter ceo jack dorsey is selling his first ever tweet as an nft so twitter ceo jack dorsey proud owner of the first ever tweet on the social media platform is auctioning it off 
as a non-fungible token. Dorsey today put the tweet from March 1st, 2006, sorry, which reads, just setting up my Twitter, on sale via the platform Valuables. As of 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, the bid was at $888,000 uh, in Ethereum. So that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, it says here the auction uh, will last until Dorsey accepts a bid. Oh, God. Well, I'm priced out already. $888,000 in Ethereum. Uh, yeah. Hopefully someone out there gets the deal of a lifetime. Uh, and obviously this NFT space is just growing and growing. But for me, I am worried. It does feel a little bit ICO-ish like 2017. There will be uh, digital art, digital NFTs that will hold their value and increase in time. But I think a majority of them, and I'm not saying Jack's first tweet uh, will be one of these, but a majority of them are probably not going to be worth much into the future. It is just a whole lot of hype at the moment. Uh, you know, some of this Beeple stuff uh, is probably going to be worth a whole lot. Although, again, buying it for a dollar and selling it for $150,000 the next day, that's definitely hype-ish. I doubt that it's actually worth $150,000, uh, but maybe long term it could be, just whether it is now or not. I don't know, time will tell. Maybe you know those people made the best decision in their life getting his artwork uh, for a dollar. I, I wish I had have got one, in all fairness. I, again, if I could flip it for 150000 I absolutely uh, would. Well, actually, maybe not. I'd have to see the artwork. Maybe I really like it. But I'm just not sure it's going to hold that $150,000 value uh, into the sort of midterm anyway. Long, long term, quite possibly could. Short to sort of midterm, well, not so much short because they're still pretty hyped at the moment, but sort of midterm, so in maybe another 12 months or so's time, maybe even less, six months' time, could be worth a whole lot less. But look, if you got it for a dollar and it's worth $2, you've still doubled your money and I think it'll probably they'll probably be worth at least two dollars so you know congratulations to those who got on there all right Mike Novogratz so Novogratz Galaxy Digital pulls in 32 million dollars for an Ethereum fund according to Securities and Exchange Commission filings made today two Ethereum funds launched by Galaxy Digital have thus far received 32.1 million dollars in investment First noticed by Coindesk, the Galaxy Institutional Ethereum Fund, LP, incorporated in Delaware, reported $22 million in investments from just three investors, while another version of the fund incorporated in the Cayman Islands reported $10 million from two investors. So, again, the crypto space is still growing, and even though you know prices aren't soaring at the moment, you know the smart money, they're still buying. And, you know... It's hard to say that they're not smart. Look, are they buying uh, a dip? Yes, and for those who are new, that's the best time to buy, provided you believe we're still in a bull market. And I'm guessing a lot of people think we are still in a bull market because they're buying the dip. Now, you don't buy the dip when you're in a bear market. In a bear market, you have to wait for it to bottom out and show a pattern that it is actually bottomed, and there's usually going to be a small bounce right at the bottom, but if it kind of dips and then has this really strong comeback, it's probably a dead cat bounce. You really do need to wait for things to kind of bottom and level out, and they'll likely level out for weeks to months, you know, slowly making their way up. It'll be nothing major, and that is a good indication of the bottom is in. Uh, just a sort of a sharp, a sharp dump and then a quick uh, retrace, that could be the bottom, but if it's a fairly big one, it's probably not. All right, moving on. So wealth managers, uh, they want clarity on Bitcoin rules. Now, I found this very interesting. According to Jimmy Lee, CEO of Wealth Consulting Group, financial advisors are frustrated by not being able to manage crypto for their clients. Many investors end up uh, pursuing it on their own. Uh, and that's true. And, and look, personally... I think that's a better way most of the time is to handle your own crypto because when you have other people handling it, they kind of own it. If it's with them, you know, the possession is 98 tenths of the law, as they say. If the crypto is not in your hands, then really somebody else kind of owns it. And likewise, they're charging you a fee to hold it. So don't get me wrong. If you've got your crypto with somebody and they are paying you money to have it, then it's not bad. But... If it's simply you know sitting with them and nothing's happening, 
well, I may as well be sitting with you if nothing's happening. So that's uh, where I'm, you know, in two minds about it. Look, I, I do think for people who are new to the space and if, you know, like BlockFi, for instance, I like BlockFi and I've got some crypto with them. Technically, they own it though. Well, not technically. Technically, I still own it. I suppose I should reword that. But it's with them. If something happens to them, if there's no insurance and all the rest of it, then, oh well, too bad, so sad. I'm not getting anything for it. But... I, you know, I personally believe they're safe uh, and they're backed by some pretty big players, so I'd, I'm confident that things will be fine there. But they are paying me interest for having it sit on their platform. And don't get me wrong, they're taking some of those profits as well. And all's fair in love and war. So I don't really mind what they do with it as long as they pay me a dividend for it. It's better me getting some kind of dividend than it simply just sitting you know, in a wallet and doing nothing and earning nothing. So... All right, here's something very interesting. One million per Bitcoin in 10 years in terms of dollar. Uh, Bitcoin is going to infinity, says Kraken CEO. And look, I, you know, I, I don't know if it'll even take 10 years. I think it'll probably be sooner. And particularly if, yeah, uh, you know, they just keep printing money, then I think it really will happen a whole lot sooner. So while Bitcoin prices have been coasting along between 46 to 48 k during the last three days, a number of proponents are still bullish about the crypto assets' long-term value. On Thursday, Kraken CEO Jesse Powell said that he thinks Bitcoin could easily reach a million dollar valuation per coin. When you measure it in terms of dollars, you have to think it's going to infinity, he insists. And yeah, for me... I tend to agree. If they're just going to continue to print money the way they are and it does become the norm, then yeah, there's no way that Bitcoin doesn't go to a million dollars. But what we have to then consider is what is a million dollars worth then? I mean, it's a million dollars in the sense at the time, but it's probably not worth what a million dollars is now because there's just going to be more money. So it's the same as like a million dollars today doesn't really buy you too much. You can't get a whole lot with it. You're unlikely to be able to retire on it unless you're in a a, a lower socio-economical kind of place, uh, particularly sort of not a third world country, but you know not a developed nation anyway. Because the developed nations, you know, a million bucks that'll buy your house, and then you got you know maybe half a million dollars left to try and retire on. Depending on your age, you're probably not going to be able to do it. But a million dollars, 10, 15 years ago. Yep, you could have retired on a million dollars 10 or 15 years ago. It was a lot of money back then. But, you know, with everything that's happened, they would probably find themselves in trouble. But it, what I'm saying is a million dollars, you know, 10, 15 years ago could get you a whole lot more than what a million dollars can get you now. In Australia, if you want a, a, a nice house, and not an amazing house, just a nice house, there's your million dollars gone straight up. So, yeah, it's not enough to retire on. But as opposed to when I was a child, God... You know, my mum bought a house for $82,000. That's here in Australia, $82,000. And she sold it a few years ago for $400,000. So imagine how many houses you could have bought with a million dollars when, you know, the houses were going for around about $80,000. You could have bought a ton of them. Whereas when she sold her house for $400,000, she only could have bought two houses. So that's what we're talking about in the terms of the dollar. The dollar is just being devalued so much that a million dollars per coin is not probably not going to be that much by the time that it is worth a million dollars per coin if we just keep printing the way that it's been going on. Now, last but not least, as I've said, I do think we're going to chop and change uh, for a while in the crypto markets, and I do think there's a point where it's going to go lower. And so I found this over on Twitter. Now, this is a four-hour chart, but this is what I kind of see as well. And as we can see here, it comes down to around the 38 to sort of $41,000 mark. I do think we will see something like this in the next few days to maybe even next sort of week. We'll have to wait and see because this is how it's been playing out. And I do think we probably see something like this, a bit of a shakeout, and then everyone gets bullish and goes really long again. And then we have one final shakeout, bringing us, again, possibly down into the high $30,000 mark. And I think it'll be a week. It won't be any daily closes or anything like that. But look, that's just me. Uh, again, I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think we have hit the bottom again? So do you think, you know, down here around kind of the $43,000 mark, do you think that was the low and it's just up from here that this is not going to correct? This is actually starting to continue to make its way back up? 
or do you think we're going for one more low before we finally start to make the next move up? Please let me know in the comments down below. All right, this has been a bit of a long one, so that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations and well done, and I'll see you next time.